Welcome to Rocky Watches Movies. Today we're diving into the deep end of nostalgia with a look at Baywatch, the series that ran on our screens from 1989 to 2001, and the topic of many a teenage boy's bedroom wall posters. Grab your sunscreen because we're about to uncover the hidden gems, behind-the-scenes secrets, and fascinating facts that even the most dedicated Baywatch fans might not know. So let's get on with it. Here are 30 things you never knew about Baywatch. From the beginning, Baywatch's visual trademark was the sight of a lifeguard running towards danger in slow motion. The idea came from a producing partner of Michael Burke, who had just been shooting the 1988 Summer Olympic Games, and had captured footage of sprinters at slower frame rates during the 100m dash. Hasselhoff later claimed the shots were used to pad shows that were running short without having to spend more money for footage. At the role of Hasselhoff's on-screen son, Hobie, Producers auditioned Leonardo DiCaprio. While they were impressed with his performance, they felt the 15-year-old was slightly too old for the part. Actor Jeremy Jackson, four years younger than DiCaprio, was cast instead. Hasselhoff, who had legendarily become a singing sensation in Germany and Austria, said he initially didn't want to do Baywatch, dismissively calling it Night Rider in a bathing suit. They eventually won him over, though. Despite its virtues, American network viewers weren't all that impressed with Baywatch when it premiered in 1989. The show finished 74th out of 111 series that year. International viewers, however, couldn't get enough. Its popularity in Germany and the UK helped convince co-creators Burke, Bonin and Douglas Schwartz to resurrect it for syndication. To make the deal work, Hasselhoff volunteered to reduce his salary per episode in order to receive a greater share of the profits if it was a hit. The form-fitting flattery of the red lycra swimsuits worn by the cast members turned out to have some unforgiving edicts. Alexandra Paul said that her contract specified she could not gain more than £5 over the weight she was cast at on the show. While Paul initially thought it was just for the women, she later found out the clause applied to both sexes. The famous beach drama wasn't always called Baywatch, which came from the name of the Santa Monica Bay rescue boats. It was instead originally titled Aquatic Corps for Emergency Services, or ACES, but that doesn't quite have the same ring to it. Hasselhoff disagreed with Pamela Anderson's casting. I said... I don't want anybody from Playboy. This is a family show. Actually meeting her changed his mind immediately, and Anderson as CJ Parker proved the quintessential Baywatch babe. He also denied ever worrying that her mere physical presence would upstage him, though he certainly wasn't alone in being upstaged. Each red swimsuit was tailored differently, whether the straps were skinny or wide, the legs were cut higher, or some necklines more plunging than others to accentuate the actress wearing it. Even though the show was a flop during its first season, the following season saw huge improvements. In fact, it was one of the most watched television shows in the world at one point, with a weekly viewership of over 1 billion people. When Baywatch relocated to Hawaii, a number of cast additions were made. The most notable, Jason Momoa who later found fame on HBO's Game of Thrones and Aquaman in the DC Universe. Asked as a lifeguard at 19, Momoa has said that the role was not necessarily his big break. I couldn't find an agent for four years after Baywatch, he said. They don't take you seriously. They think you're a pretty boy, this and that. It's hard. No one really makes it off that show. NBC almost fired Erica Oleniak after finding out she had just posed for Playboy. Producers insisted they keep her, having picked her over, among others, Terry Hatcher, Neve Campbell and Alicia Silverstone. Mila Kunis not only guest starred on the famous 90s show once, but twice. In her first appearance, she played a student named Annie, whereas in her second go-around, she took on the role of a young blind girl named Bonnie. Dawn Weatherly was cast as Jill Riley as a last-minute replacement for Pamela Bowen who, as the crew found out when they went to shoot her first ocean scene, was afraid of the water. After she panicked on set, a doctor ordered her to stay away from the water for two weeks, and she was uninsurable after that. Not quite sure why she auditioned for the role in the first place. Yasmin Bleeth, another instant pin-up idol from the series, parted ways in 1997 when, according to multiple people, her drug problem got out of hand. 
she quickly found a new job on the detective series Nash Bridges with Don Johnson and went to rehab where she met her husband Paul Cerrito. But she largely fell off the radar following an arrest for cocaine possession and driving under the influence in September 2001. She took a plea deal that November and was sentenced to probation. A global popularity of Baywatch may never be rivalled. In places where television was not as commonplace, fans still found a way. In an interview, Hasselhoff said the Shah of Iran's wife once came up to him and told him Iranians sold tickets to the show in Tehran at homes with satellite dishes, so others could watch it. Co-creator Michael Burke told the BBC in 2013 that NBC was initially less than enthusiastic about a lifeguard series, fearing there were only so many plots that could revolve around CPR. To prove the concept was viable, Burke and his partners shot a montage of lifeguard footage on Venice Beach and spliced it to Don Henley's The Boys of Summer. The immaculately mustachioed Michael Newman was a real lifeguard. Because of his skills, Newman was able to pull double or triple duty, doing stunts, instructing cast members on rescue protocol, and sharing stories of real-life rescues for story plots. Producers even named his character Michael Newman. Professional surfer Kelly Slater was cast as Jimmy Slade. He quickly grew tired of the show, interfering with his surfing as well as the far-fetched plots. He has said, I'd be like, what? There's an octopus that's stealing surfboards and hiding them in a secret cove, and I'm going to fight him in the next show? Who writes this crap? In 1993, he asked to be written off the show. Another key reason Baywatch was able to find new life after NBC was the dissolution of a partnership between production company Gannett and former network executive Grant Tinker. Because no entity existed to control the show's assets, producers were able to secure the rights to the series back for a perfunctory sum of just $10. When Baywatch moved to syndication, the show's budget was slashed by 30%. In order to conserve funds, several sets that appeared on screen were actually functional rooms for crew members to use off screen. A lifeguard station kitchen had running water and was used as a production break room, and a gym set was practical enough for Hasselhoff to pump his pecs between takes. Hoping to exploit the Baywatch brand, Hasselhoff and producers conceived a spin-off, Baywatch Nights, in 1995 as a more adult oriented alternative. Instead of saving drowning victims, Hasselhoff's Mitch Buchanan chased down criminals as part of his friend's private detective firm. Although ratings were only modest during its first season, producers decided to renew it for a second, so it wouldn't appear the Baywatch brand was losing any steam. According to Hasselhoff, the company even bought airtime in some markets. As Baywatch approached its first decade on the air, rising production costs became an issue. To conserve funds, the series first decided to move to Australia. Baywatch Down Under was intended to be a facelift of sorts, but locals were having none of it. Citizens of Avalon Beach protested the show closing down portions of the area, chasing away resident koalas, and even telling residents to keep the noise down while the show's stars caught naps. According to the show's makeup artist Joanna Connell, Baywatch went through 40 bottles of sunscreen a month in order to keep the cast free from sunburns and melanomas. Among the actors originally considered for former Navy SEAL turned Lieutenant Lifeguard Mitch Buchanan were Falcon Crest heartthrob Lorenzo Lamas, the Dukes of Hazard star Tom Wopat, and British actor Adrian Paul, who'd go on to star in the Highlander TV series. They shot a pilot for European markets that featured actual nudity. The show opened with the lifeguards all gathering around with binoculars, trying to see a photo shoot on the beach. There were two nude scenes in that pilot that unfortunately never saw the light of day. After finding out they'd been picked up for 12 episodes in 1989, Bonin was with fellow producers and writers at Venice Beach scouting locations when a boy ran up and said his brother was drowning. Bonin ran into the water found the boy, gave him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation and saved him, a rescue for which he was awarded the Lifeguard Medal of Valor from the county. Sadly, the ocean was apparently so full of garbage and other suspect substances, medics would disinfect the actors as soon as they got out of the water, spraying every orifice you could find, Billy Warlock has said. As Shawnee and Eddie, Eleniak and Warlock were love interests on screen and off and it was rumoured that their salary demands contributed to their farewells in Season 3, 
Episode 2, River of No Return, Part 2. They both insist that they just didn't like the creative direction the show was taking, and while Eddie and Shawnee tied the knot and moved to Australia, Billy and Erica ultimately fizzled. Wearing the suit or showing off a body that could wear the suit was part of the audition. Sean Weatherly recalled unexpectedly being asked to take off her clothes, while Carmen Electra, who went right to her audition from the set of MTV Singled Out, has said that she hoped no one noticed her unshaved legs. Electra has her suit framed in her house. The last two seasons of the show were shot in Hawaii, hence the switch to Baywatch Hawaii, featuring the lady lifeguards in yellow one pieces, because just as official LA County lifeguards really do wear red, they wear yellow in the Aloha State. Hasselhoff went along for the first of those two seasons, but after deciding he was done, they re-edited the last episode so that Mitch is presumed dead after an explosion. Hasselhoff didn't even know it, Burke has said. It was his own stunt guy that said, guess what, we've been killed off. It did not go over well. Yet Mitch resurfaced alive and well on Baywatch Hawaiian Wedding. And there you have it folks, you are now a little bit more wiser about every 90s teenage boy's favourite show, Baywatch. If you enjoyed the video, which I presume you did as you got this far, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos coming to Rocky Watches Movies. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one, bye for now.